In this video, we're going to look at the case study of Hurricane Katrina. It was the sixth strongest Atlantic hurricane ever recorded and the third strongest to make landfall in the United States of America. It crossed Florida, where it left some 100,000 homes without power, and then moved inland and hit Louisiana, and eventually New Orleans. When it hit New Orleans, the wind speed was approximately 200 kilometers an hour, which would have made it a Category 5 hurricane. It destroyed many buildings and caused extensive damage to others. Hurricane force winds were recorded along a 200 km an hour stretch of coastline. Hurricane Katrina, as I mentioned before, was a Category 5 storm. And that meant that it had a storm surge of about 9 meters in height. You can see the damage that the storm surge caused on the left two pitches. It caused extensive flooding over many kilometers of land. Initially, many people hoped that New Orleans would miss most of the storm. However, it later emerged that many key levees had been breached. Much of New Orleans lies below sea level, so this was particularly damaging. The flood walls didn't hold back the water, and within 24 hours, 80% of the city was flooded. You're about to see Hurricane Katrina and the events as they transpired. The day before Katrina hit, high tides created by the storm outlet bands already engulfed low-lying wetland areas. Then, on the 29th of August, rising water and the industrial canal leaked through damaged gates into neighborhoods on both sides. And then the waves started to come in and started to hit and to breach the levees. Katrina's storm surge pounded these levees, which eventually crumbled and they advanced into the wetlands of uh, St. Bernard Parish. Katrina made landfall on the 29th of August with a wall of 21 feet of water that crossed um, into the Mississippi and inundated most of the areas. This water was also funneled up the levees, protecting New Orleans, which was soon breached, spreading eastern New Orleans. In the west, witnesses reported that the 17th Street Canal levee um, was also um, suffering damage. This funnel effect um, also breached the industrial canal where water overtops the flood walls on both sides of the levee and you can see the breaches forming there. Spread them to Bywater, Gentilly and will eventually also spread into the lower ninth ward as well. This area um, was extremely badly damaged, many homes being flooded, cars being moved around. Finally, the main levers were also breached and you can see the extensive damage that occurred there. When the storm surge passed um, uh, 10 feet, it breached the London Avenue Canal levee wall and it started to move into Gentilly and further into Lakeview as well.
One of the big problems that New Orleans suffered from was the fact that when the water actually got into many parts of New Orleans, and all these areas that you can now see that have been flooded, that it had no way to escape because the levees actually retained uh, the water and when the storm surge retreated, they couldn't escape back out. And finally, you can see that huge area of coastland that was flooded. On the 29th of August to the 1st of September, with Katrina I moving north of the city, storm surge levels dropped and the overtopping of levees ceased. But um, the lake remained swollen and water continued to bleed into the city through the damaged levees. As I mentioned before, by August the 31st, 80% of the city was flooded with about 6.1 meters of water in certain areas. This large flooding affected mainly the poor parts of the city in general, and the situation quickly deteriorated. Thousands of people were unable to evacuate. Many people took refuge in the uh, city superdome, but this didn't have sanitation, it lacked supplies, and it became overcrowded and overheated. Law and order broke down across the city, and there were reports of widespread violence and looting. Troops were eventually sent in thing as well. Large fires broke out in several districts of the city, with huge blasts at the chemical plant near the French Quarter. Although 80% of the residents were evacuated, many remained. And you can see that um, many refugees took refuge in a lot of the surrounding states around uh, Louisiana. There's a lot of criticism for the response that the president and the government made to alleviate the effects of Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina had hugely low pressure, 902 millibars, and it caused extensive damage. It was the costliest Atlantic hurricane in US history. Over 1,700 people died. By August 2005, one year after, the city's levees had been repaired to the standard equaling their previous condition. Despite this, a lot of people say not enough had been done. Over here in this diagram, you can see how they started to reconstruct the levees. They had to first block them off using helicopters to drop rocks and sandbags in place. Then they would insert a steel barrier. And finally, they would then try and pump out the water that was trapped inside the area. About a billion um, in relief meant for victims of Hurricane Katrina apparently was lost to fraud, with much of this money being siphoned off apparently for Hawaiian holidays, football tickets, and other activities too. <laughs>